All right, so this I'm going to cover CPLD, uh, the CPLD on the on the on the metacarpals PCB there. This CPLD was required because all of these all of these IMUs, all, all 17 of them, including the ones on the main and the metacarpals PCB, which are which are gated through this. Um, the reason for that is to isolate electrically uh, these IMUs. So I'm going to just draw one digit, but you'll get the idea. Uh, because each thing has, has, it really has two chip select lines, but for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to draw one. Um, and then it has several shared lines on a bus. So SPI data, SPI clock. Uh, uh, the interrupt lines are all driven in open collector mode, so those are all wired or as well. Um, so there's there's nine common lines um, that all connect to these IM, the string of IMUs and the, and the major difference is that they're chip select lines. So here we have one and two. So and it's actually three, four, and five because it seems like ST uh, put two separate sensors on the same die, but they are logically treated independently. So the software wouldn't know what package is which if my if my addressing scheme is inconsistent. So that's part of what the CPLD does. I initially went toward the CPLD because uh, my prototype model used 74 154s. So the, this is the, the 416 demultiplexer and, and also a, a sidechain demultiplexer to switch between the two banks. Um, but the problem was that the rise time, uh, the rise and fall times on this part are not such that you could you could take full advantage of, of uh, the rest of the components in the system. It became a design limitation. Uh, it would have induced uh, um, a, a minimum latency of 500 nanoseconds between, uh, I'm sorry, 500, 500 nano or micro, I forget. It was unacceptable. So the rise times on the CPLD are much, much better. Um, but that's, that's only one of the things it's doing. It's also, it's also translating what had to be fed as parallel signals from the 17, or from the, to the 154. It's also translating between a serial stream that comes in over the SPI bus internally in the CPLD breaks those out into this parallel feed and then and then the same logical arrangement is there there's there's 74 154s without the without the timing deficits so um, those drive the output pins which it goes to let's see it's going to be 34 of these chip selects so that's one of the primary responsibilities of the CPLD is addressing one of the the second responsibility is IRQ aggregation as I said, all of these, um, all of the IMUs on a digit have three interrupt pins, th three, uh, so three IRQs per digit. And, and again, this is true of the main board and the metacarpals board too. These two boards right here are seen as one logical digit, so that's one digit. Um, uh, and the, the reasons for that we'll go into it in detail at a different time. I'm going to try and keep this video to under five minutes, and so it's not appropriate here. So IRQ aggregation. When an IRQ signal comes in, the host CPU has to figure out what generated it. Now I'm going to set these IRQs up on such a way as to I can prior two of them belong to the accelerometer magnetometer, one of them belongs to the gyro. So um, I can prioritize those interrupts and 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 set flags and whatnot because as soon as the CPLD watch this, all those IRQs are hooked up to the CPLD. So as soon as as soon as the IRQ it latches the prior state of the IRQ register as well as the change. So it's an OR kind of a signal until the host CPU reads that register to see which digit happened. And all this happens over SPI, by the way, uh, the, the digit reading. I have several pins available to me for reasons I'll get into at, at the next video because the CPLD is a big topic. Um, but uh, all of this gets read over SPI, but the host has to actually actively clear this register. So no matter how many interrupts happen asynchronously, it'll, it'll all latch into that same register, that the host, and the host won't miss anything. Um, so IRQ aggregation is the second major, major goal. Um, the third major goal is the IRDA peripheral, which is going to have to be at a fourth video because these, these I talk pretty quick and I think I cover good ground, but it's, it's not quite enough time to boil down a lot of technical detail for the people who will care about it. So I'm going to pick up the next video and we're going to be talking about the IRDA.